following is a paid program. The opinions expressed are not necessarily those of WNBU and Interbanks Media. Money. Welcome to All Things Money with David Blaine, a thoughtful and revealing discussion of actionable ideas and effective strategies to help you through the complex world of investing, taxes, and real estate. Now, with All Things Money, here's David Blaine. Hello and welcome to All Things Money. I'm your host for the show, David Blaine. Thank you for joining us today on 94.1 FM WNBU, as well as cable TV 10 in New Bern. We're also, you may be listening to this on our website, www.dlblaine.com. We've got a brand new website with tons and tons of audio and video from the past several years. You can watch it right there online. A little player comes up. You can watch the TV show right there online, or you can download the audio or you can listen to the audio on the web but it's a wonderful resource of information I encourage you to check it out that's dlblain.com www.dlblain.com on the website there's also a contact us page where you can send us your comments on the show any questions that you may have about something we talked about maybe you have a topic that you'd like us to address we'll be happy to see if we can get it on the show of course, you can always email us directly. The email for the show is allthingsmoney at dlblaine.com. And, of course, we still use the old-fashioned telephone, which is 252-633-0107. Give us a call. Let us know what you're thinking, um, what you'd like us to discuss on the show. Of course, we do have, um, I do own a wealth management firm if you're interested in what we do. Uh, managing your money, doing some retirement planning, uh, state planning, uh, one of our specialties, tax planning. By all means, contact us about that as well. But for the show today, we want to talk a little bit about some taxation and creating and maintaining wealth in America. The first thing I thought I would mention after the State of the Union address from President Obama talked about making sure that anyone making over a million dollars pays 30% in tax and don't want to you know get too uh, political but just talk a little bit about what that means and uh, how it may affect some of you out there everyone's sense of fairness is relative you know this person thinks one thing is fair this person thinks another thing is fair and what happens is when we allow the tax code to permeate people's sense of fairness what happens is it ends up being very unfair to everyone. I mean, the reality is about half of Americans don't pay anything in tax, and we're saying that people over a million now should have a minimum of 30% uh, tax. Well, you know what? There's already something in the tax code called the Alternative Minimum Tax, the AMT. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't, but the AMT was enacted a number of years ago, and guess what it was designed to do? It was designed to ensnare those few people at the top who, at the time, Congress didn't feel like were paying enough tax. So they enacted the alternative minimum tax. And what it does is you compute your regular tax liability. And, of course, back when this was enacted, it was all done by paper. So you had to fill out all the forms for your, you know, following the normal tax rules. And then at the end, you know, it said, okay, you owe 20 or your tax is $25,000. Then you would go over here and you would compute your tax according to the alternative rules, the alternative minimum tax rules. And you compared the two. And if the alternative minimum tax rules said you owed 30 and the regular tax rules said you owed 25, well, you owed 30,000. And it was designed to get these people that were legally using the tax law to their advantage and keeping their tax bracket low it was designed to ensnare them to make sure they were paying a minimum fair amount. Well, any of you that make any sort of reasonable amount of money out there are well aware of the AMT today, and it ensnares mostly now middle-class Americans that uh, make what I would call a, a decent wage, middle-class folks earning, you know, fifty, hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollars, somewhere in there, and it comes into play for them. And so I would just caution whenever they start tweaking the tax code and targeting a very specific group and trying to punish that group 
or trying to give a benefit over here to this specific group, I can almost guarantee you that within several years, this group that was targeted will figure out a way to get out of it, and, but yet it will still apply to a whole bunch of people that it was not intended to apply to in the first place. The same thing when they target a benefit for uh, a few people. In fact, the number one fraud out there today is the earned income credit. I mean, you never hear anything about this. It's always make the millionaires pay more tax, pay more tax, pay more tax. The, the, the big elephant in the room is the immense pervasive cheating that goes on in the earned income credit. And what the earned income credit is for lower earning Americans that earn below a certain amount, they, they have no tax, but they actually get money back from the government. They file their taxes. Not only do they not owe anything, but they actually get a check back. Huge, huge widespread fraud on this sort of thing. So once again, they were trying to give a benefit to a certain group of people. And of course, like everything, when you have you know, hundreds of millions of people doing it, uh, trying to control it centrally, it's going to go out of control. So just wanted to throw that out there that as we open up this tax debate, what we really need is some real tax reform, make it simpler for people. You know, we prepare the majority of our clients' taxes. Uh, we do a very good job. We have CPAs on staff. I'm an expert in taxation, but I would not think more than half a second if somebody said you could do away with the whole thing, you'd have no more responsibility for preparing taxes. Of course, you wouldn't bill for it either. It wouldn't take me more than half a second to give that whole thing up for something more simple. The way the tax code is written now is just way too complicated and ensnares way too many people and tacking on another tax for the millionaires is not going to is not going to solve the uh, the question. Um, people with high price CPAs, high price attorneys, I guess we're sort of guilty of this. There are ways to legally lower the amount of tax you pay and we spend a lot of time with our clients making sure that they pay the minimum amount of tax possible and part of it is just like Romney is shifting your income from ordinary income to capital gains to passive income things that you don't pay Social Security Medicare tax on its basic tax planning and people that have sufficient resources to make that type of income also have sufficient resources to hire people to legally work around them. And so they, these rules just never work out the way they're intended. Um, well, I got a little bit off track there, but I did want to highlight that, that we need to be cautious about targeting specific groups in the tax code because normally it ends up ensnaring people that it was not intended to, such as the AMT, or targeting benefits such as the earned income credit that become widespread lightning rod for abuse. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit about Americans uh, creating wealth and how to maintain it in today's volatile markets. So for all things money, I'm your host, David Blaine, and be right back after a few short messages.